What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanics Survival, and I know after the last episode, we got the automatic refinery grinder setup thing going on here, but I decided instead of focusing on grinding resources and building a base, I wanted to do a little bit more exploring of the map. There's some stuff I know we haven't found yet that I want to go and try and find, and as well, I, I built a whole new car. So, I was actually going to build a new car that was powered by a suspension glitch because I thought, you know what, let's get some unlimited fuel going on so we can explore the map and not have to consume fuel. But then Brent Batch was all suspension glitch bad, piston engine good. So I decided to build a piston engine car. And here we've got a three piston piston engine car and it works quite well. So this is the same kind of piston engine I built in a new V Pro video a while ago. And it actually took a fair amount to get in survival, mainly because you'll notice this sensor here had to be upgraded to level 2 just to get the additional range. And these pistons, the drive pistons, had to be upgraded to level 3 to get the additional speed. A level 1 piston only has a tiny little bit of speed, so it was really quite slow. And I decided to upgrade them, which of course takes more component kits and blah 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 blah. But it's a really simple piston engine. Hold the one switch and it spins in the one direction. And you can see it does that simply by just pushing that wood block in front of the sensors. And the sensors on each of the three pistons just go. And then if you press two, it pushes the other wood block from the other side. And that, of course, puts it in the opposite direction. And then that piston engine just spins this central drive shaft, which, of course, goes through this other little piston just kind of glitched in, in the way so that it has no collision. And that, of course, goes to another drive shaft entirely. So it's a really simple system and it actually gives us a ton of power now it's not the fastest thing in the world it's pretty quick it's slightly faster than sprinting which is good because that means you can outrun farm bots but obviously it's not as fast as if we had a fully upgraded gas engine or anything like that however we're not using any fuel which is kind of awesome also by the way thank you guys so much for pointing out that the farm bots spawn in the number two i transferred all my stuff to one of the lower ones because i logged back in and farm bots were literally trying to kill my stuff. So everything's moved now. It's all good. It's in number three. But today I just want to explore the map a little bit. This car, um, like I said, can drive forever. We don't ever need to put gas in it. Pistons don't require fuel. And you'll actually notice there's a little bit of a groove, a hole in the wood, if you will, under the seat. And actually we can kind of just take a look at that. But what I did is I put the switches for the pistons to turn the engine on and off under the seat. Since it's just slightly faster than running, it could eventually get away from you. And I don't want you to accidentally like lose it completely. So I just put the switches on the seat. So if the farm bots destroy the seat, it'll actually completely shut off the car. And there's no way the car could move. Of course, you got to remember to turn the switch off when you leave. But if we get on a straight here, we should be able to just show really quickly. It's slightly faster. So here we go. I'm going to jump off. I'm going to sprint and it's going to get away. So I'm just going to jump back in real quick. So it is just a little bit faster. But like I said, just enough to outrun those farm bots. Eventually what I want to do is put a robot arm on the front of this for mining resources. So we can just drive up to a resource rock or a tree or whatever and mine away with this vehicle. And obviously we'll take a little bit of gas to do the mining, but we won't require any, you know, extra gas for transport. And of course with this piston car, it's got so much torque. We can literally push as much weight as we want. I mean, we could fill this up with resources and we'd never have an issue pushing the weight. Now... Oh, there's some honeycombs. You know what? Let's let's get those. The only reason honeycombs are good is because you need honeycombs to make tires. Uh, you need the beeswax to make the tires. So it's super useful to get as many of these as possible as quickly as possible. And there was a structure right up on the left there and one on the right as well. So let's just check those both out. I haven't really gone any further down the road than this packing station here. I kind of want to go all the way down the road and see where it goes. You know what? Those are just basic structures. Yeah, I'm not too worried. I mean, there's some stuff on them, I guess. All right, let's just let's let's just grab the stuff. We're going to do the safety thing. Put your car up all the way on the top of the lift while you're looting. And that way, if a farm bot comes along, it won't just wreck your car, which is good because you don't want to accidentally, you know, lose all your car and your progress and stuff. There we go. Some fuel. You're dead. You're dead. Come here. Come here. Yeah, you're dead. Thank you. All right, not really much up here, to be honest. Just that one crate up top so let's just jump up and grab that real quick uh should be able to just do this there we go perfect anything good component kits is really yeah blueberry i mean that's good for food but component kits are really the big the big resource we need anything out in that direction actually there's oh oh what is that you see that that looks like there's actually 
like a hole in the mountain over there. You know what? Let's go check that out first and then come back this way towards the road. I know there's one thing that we're looking for in particular, and there's a, a, some trader guy. I haven't really seen the trader yet, but I've heard of all these other YouTubers talking about this trader, and apparently he's important to get other things. You can trade materials to him, and he'll give you other stuff. So let's just, oh, hold on, hold on. Get this real quick. I love this piston car, by the way. It's honestly, it's so good. It's just never requiring fuel. I mean, it's kind of an exploit. And yeah, we're not exactly the fastest vehicle in the world, but this is just great. I can just cruise around. I don't even have to hold the button, just have to steer and just kind of, you know, let it power us along. And look, hills, it doesn't even care. Like any hill doesn't make a difference. It just drives up. Oh yeah, this has got to be something. Keep out farm bots. Farm bot, yeah, a bunch of, you know what, it's fine. We're just gonna, sorry, dude. Nice, this has got to be something important. Oh yeah, what is this? Is this the trader? I hope this is the trader. He's got like this rock surrounding him. That's awesome. Okay, so he's actually not that far. That's great. He's really, really close. All right, so he takes caged up people or fruit crates and then you press the button and then that gives you whatever. So you put that all here. Okay, so we got to find caged up people or we got to find fruit crates. Now the fruit crates we can get from that packing station, right? Which is like right next to our base. So once we start growing fruit, that'll be good. And what does this guy do? Oh, uh, hey, dude, what's up? Okay, you got the spud gun. You got the spud gun. You got the spud gatling gun. The spud shotgun. Garment boxes. Okay, he wants broccoli and stuff. All right, all right. This is actually pretty easy. So he's got some good stuff. But of course, we need to actually trade him some things. So he wants vegetables and trapped people. So what do we need? I think spud guns are the more important thing out of anything. Blueberries. Oh, we could trade. Oh, we could trade for better seeds. Carrots for dirt. Okay, so we'll definitely have to come back here. It's a nice spot. And at least now we know exactly where it is. Just kind of take a turn off the main road and head left when you hit that structure. It's kind of weird that he's not on the road. He's just in the middle of, you know, nowhere. To be honest, you could probably build a pretty sweet base in here. I mean, you've got water and everything. I'd rather have the base close to the mechanic shop and on the ocean, to be honest. But, uh... Let's just get out of here. Let's head up here. And let's keep going down the road. I want to see what else we're going to run into on that road. Look at this. Look at the power, though. Doesn't even care. What are we... Oh, oh, we can sneak through here. Okay. Oh, well, now we're stuck. All right, so the road's that way. But before we head to the road, look, there's like a tree fort or something here. Another building. This is another wrecked area, which is... Oh, God, a farm bot. All right, you know, I'm going to kill him before he wrecks the car. Come here, bud. Come here. Oh, I missed. Come here. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so remember how I was saying before how we needed another scorched area? We've got another scorched area right here. This is great. So we'll be able to come back here and just collect a ton of the ash planks when we get to the point of building a hardened base because you need the this ash charcoal stuff to make the hardened steel. So this is actually going to be super, super convenient. We can just come back and, you know, loot this whole area. I don't know if my vehicle is going to burn if it's in here. I don't think it should, right? There's no fire near it. Just leave it up like that. Should be okay. All right. Gather a few of these while we're here. Might as well. Definitely going to be farm bots in here, right? Either way, hopefully we can find some food. I haven't honestly been growing anything for kind of a long time, which is okay. I've just been sort of focused on, you know, trying to gather some resources and just make sure that we don't get killed by farm bots. And to be honest, I've been mostly hanging out near the base so you don't really need food when you're right next to your spawn point because you can just kind of die and respawn right there with pretty much no consequence so it's not too big a deal i mean you got to run back and get your stuff but that's about it and uh now that we're out exploring i kind of don't want to die so getting some seeds getting a lot of these component kits which is good see we only have two tomatoes left and that's like not going to help our food situation any hopefully we can find some sun shakes or something I mean, the other thing I've noticed too, you can actually just grab some corn in a field and then feed a cow and it'll basically just eat corn and give you milk. And then you can drink the milk, which gives you a bunch of food as well. Mostly water again, but it does give you some food. Oh, nice, a carrot. Let's eat the carrot right away. That's what I'm talking about. Let's head back this way and get back onto the road. I might at some point maybe build some signs so that it's easy to find. Although to be honest, you know, now that I know it's here, it's not really the end of the world. Let's see what happens if we just head through here. Oh, we got a farm bot there. Whatever. We'll just outrun him for a bit. Come here, bud. Look at this. 
Look at it. We're still faster. As long as you're faster than sprinting, you can outrun the farm bots. It's awesome. That was the one thing I was really worried about. Oh, yeah, look. Here's the packing station. It's literally right behind the packing station. It's like the tile right there behind it. So that's great. Oh, and there's honeycombs. Oh, okay. You know what? We got to grab all this stuff. We're going to... The honeycombs are so important for building tires that it's just... It's the one resource I always kind of stop and get. I think honeycombs are one of the resources that respawns. I'm not sure about wood and like the metal things, the rock things, the rock formations, but honeycombs seem to respawn eventually along with like random chests. The green chests that you sort of break and pick up, they seem to respawn pretty much like all the time. They just, but not in the same location. They spawn in different locations. And so you can kind of just keep farming those, which is good, especially to get the component kits. Um, here we go. Get all this beeswax. At least the good news is now we know no matter what that we'll be able to easily just, you know, go get our fruit, pack it up at the packing station, and then just drive past the packing station, literally to that rock formation right behind it, and hit up the trader. So, let's just keep going down the road and see what else we can find. I know it's getting dark out. We do have a nice single spotlight right on the front. Of course, I did build a paint tool and a weld tool between this episode and last episode. They weren't really that big a deal, just took some resources, and I needed a weld tool to build some of this piston engine. Um, actually, I didn't even really need a weld tool, but I used the weld tool to build this, and it just made everything a little bit easier. And then, of course, the paint tool, which, you know, I didn't really do much with yet, just paint the lights. All right, well, since my inventory is pretty much completely full now, let's actually just head right back to base, and then we'll come back tomorrow, and we'll see if we can, you know, get more things. I don't really want to load up the car. We could just put all the stuff on the car, but it's already nighttime anyway, so might as well just head back, unload, come back in the morning, and keep going down the road. I want to see where the road ends. I know it starts at the one parking lot by our crashed ship, but I'm curious where the end point of this road is, if there is one. All right, the sun's coming back up. We've dropped off all the inventory pretty much. I keep the blocks on me just in case. You never know when you could use some terrible blocks. Although, to be honest, I should probably start putting them in the inventory. And uh, we're just heading back past the packing station now. So let's see what's up here. Again, these, these little small buildings on the side of the roads, they're kind of super useful, I've noticed, for grinding out component kits. You can see in that one already there's something glowing. So that one's, I think, already respawned some of the chests. And we could go in there later and get them again. Same with this one we just went through. So they are super useful for getting component kits just because the loot respawns in them. Um, not really all the time, but it's enough. All right, let's just grab this tote block head. You know what? We're just going to throw this. There we go. Let's keep going. Because this is a piston-powered engine, it's got so much power. We could load this up with a ton of weight. And that's why I do want to put a robot arm on this and actually make it sort of the functional mining vehicle. Because if it had a robot arm on the front that allowed you to mine an entire resource node without having to move around too much, then you could really just, you know, haul a ton of material back to base. I haven't found any cotton yet. Oh, there's a chest there just in the middle. Let's just grab that. I'm looking for... I know cotton spawns in, like, the fields somewhere, but I haven't honestly found any cotton, and I've seen a ton of fields, so I don't really know what exactly we're supposed to do about that. We need cotton to build, like, better seats and stuff, and right now we're just still using this terrible seat, which, to be honest, for this vehicle doesn't really matter too much, but it would be nice to get some better seats and uh, more details. And what's that over there? There's a structure on the left there, and there's also, like, a dome structure on the right, and then another one of these. Oh, my goodness, we're getting into more populated areas. Let's go check this one out first. Oh god, oh god, big baddie, big baddie, okay, um, can we, can we just, can we sneak this? Maybe if we leave this over here, let's be really careful, what is this anyway? I think this is just some really bad, oh, this is just like a default small storage area, you know what, this isn't even worth anything, let's just ch get out of here and head back to the road. Alright, big baddie, I think we outrun the big baddie too, but I don't really want to take that risk. I think he was slower than when we were sprinting, though. So we should outrun him because this vehicle is faster than sprinting. But, I mean, there's no point. He's got a gun, too. Oh, cotton. Yes. This must be cotton, right? Cotton. Is that cotton? Cotton. Wonderful. Oh, my goodness. This is the best. Okay. So we just need to keep coming all the way out here, then, to get cotton. We need, like, 20 or something for a seat. Oh, my goodness. There's so much of it. Awesome. Let's just grab all this cotton. Where's that big baddie? He's over to the left, isn't he? Uh, another structure there to the right. There's also, like, a big 
green tank there to the right. The road doesn't curve over to it, does it? Probably not. What is this? There's a sign here too. Oh, this is awesome. Where the heck are we? Another one of those welcome to the farming farm sign, whatever. All right, is this another packing station? This looks like another packing station. Okay, so we have two packing stations. I don't really know why we'd ever need this one. The other one was like right next to the trader. So, I mean, I don't think we'd ever really need to use this one. But let's just check it out. Make sure it's the exact same as the previous one. I think it is. Yeah, just a place where you turn in fruit. It's a different kind. Oh, it's different types of fruit. Oh, it's not the same packing station. The other packing station had like carrots and beets and stuff. This one's got the different fruit types. So you have to actually bring the other fruit to this packing station. Oh, that's so great. Oh my goodness. Also, I think this is the big warehouse. I think the devs said we can't go into the big warehouse until the 7th because it's not finished yet or something. I don't I don't really remember, but I think that up there, you can see it in the distance. I think that's the big warehouse. All right, so, oh goodness, there's a farm bot. Yeah, you missed, bud. There's, oh, there's multiple farm bots. Okay, this is not, oh, there's so many of them around here. All right, we need to, we need to back up and fight this. Um, but we need to kind of fight it a little more stealthily than what we're doing here. This is not exactly good. We just need to drive through. No, 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 no. Farm bots, leave me alone. Leave, there's so many of you. My goodness. Okay, so here's the green thing. Is it just a xylo? Is that, that's it. There's nothing to it. Oh my goodness, it's a chemical pond? That's gotta kill me, right? I wonder. You know how we can get those chemical cans? I wonder if this is a pond where you can actually like put a pump in it and just pump out the chemicals. I bet you you can, because I know you can put a pump in water and pump out the water, and it's, I guess, faster for watering cannons or stuff. I wonder if you can do the same with this chemical pond. We'd have to come back here with a pump and actually try it, because maybe if we need lots of chemicals, right now we have a whole stockpile of them, and we don't really have anything to build with them, to be perfectly honest, but if we could actually just come back here with like a pump truck and pump up a ton of chemicals, I wonder if that's actually what, what this is for. Let's just put this up on a lift, just so if any farm bots come by, and does this kill me? Does this... I'm afraid to try. Yeah, it does. Okay, it hurts. Okay, so it is... It's a giant chemical pond. I bet you we could come back here and pump chemicals. I bet you we could do that. I bet we could use this for, for chemical stuff. That's sweet, if that's actually the case. I mean, we'll definitely have to come back here once we got vacuum pumps and actually have a purpose for chemicals and see if that does anything. But let's just get out of here. There's nothing else in this direction, right? Oh, there was. There's a structure... Way out. Oh my god, look at all these farm bots chasing that one poor cow. A couple of these basic structures here. I'm not too worried about exploring them. We can go and check those out later. They're not really anything too fancy. I mean, they're just kind of standard structures. They've got a bunch of random loot in them. You know, they're good, like I said, for mining component kits. But I want to check out, you know, more unique buildings if we've got any. Oh, I can't believe there's a chemical pond there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back there at some point. That's gotta be the warehouse. Yeah, it seems like it's just another one of those. A little bit bigger than the others. Maybe we can check it out just because it's a little bit bigger. And there's another one on an island out there. You know what? Let's just go park on the shore and actually check this one out. This one does seem a little bit bigger than the other ones, but it's not... That that one's the one I really want to go check out. So yeah, there's the structure that we saw in the trailer. That little structure that was on the island. I honestly think that we could boat to here from our base. I'm pretty sure if we build the base directly on the ocean across from the mechanic shop, that's going to be right along this boating line. I think we could boat all the way along the shoreline and end up here and just jump off and actually check this out. I'm 90% sure that this is all just connected and I'm assuming the edge of the map is somewhere out there in the water where there's just, you know, there's nothing. But either way, let's check out this structure because it's definitely bigger than the last bunch. And, uh, of course we have no food, so hopefully we can find some food here. And we don't have to starve on the way back. Uh, there's, like, nobody home. There's so many farm bots just in the field on the way up here, and there's nobody here? Like, really? Nothing. Is there food here? No, just more stuff. Okay. Oh, I hear them. I hear a farm bot. They must be upstairs. 
All right, some broccoli. That's good. That's good. We'll eat the broccoli. All right, and then go upstairs. Let's take the stairs and head on up. I'm so excited about the fact that there's another packing station. I didn't realize that the one packing station only had four of the fruit, and there's much more fruit types, which is kind of awesome because it means... You have to grow a bunch of different plants, number one. And then number two, you actually have to transport them different distances. And of course, we know now that the trader's behind the one packing station, but we're still gonna have to drive to the other, pick up a bunch of boxes from all the fruit, and then drive back. So that's kind of exciting. Um, okay, you're dead. Look at that, easy mode. All right, more stuff, more soil bags, component kits. It's all good things. Pretty sure this is just another default structure like those other ones where it's just sort of like a looting structure. It'll replenish with loot, but at least it's a little bit bigger. So, you know, you get more out of it. Uh, and then, of course, we can head up even higher. This is amazing. This thing's got so much. Oh, hello. Don't knock me off. Don't knock me off. Oh, that would have sucked. Would have been like instant death from fall damage, I think. All right. I think this is the highest floor we can get to. Nothing in there. All right. This is gonna be sweet. We should be able to see a whole lot from up here. Nothing. Oh, box over here. Orange, nice. We need the food. We definitely need the food. Yeah, I think you can't you can't really tell from here, but that's definitely a structure on an island. I think it's the exact one from the trailer. And I think our base is literally over there. Because if we go out this way, we get to the road and we bring the road back. I'm pretty sure it brings us somewhere over there. So we'll definitely have to check and see if we can get here by boat one day. Uh, but either way, it's a pretty convenient little tower. What is this? That's a different color. Or maybe it's just the sunlight. It's probably just the sunlight. All right, I think that's it for this base up here. Unless there's something up top. Way up top here. No, no, nothing. Awesome. Oh, man, you can see so much from up here. This is great. So there we've got the chemical field. There's the road way over there. So definitely gonna have to come back and try and pump chemicals out of that, which I think would give us this, this chemical vial. I don't know what these are for yet, though. I have a ton of them back at base, and I haven't used them yet. I think they're for building, like, maybe paint or something like that, or maybe fertilizer. Maybe you get fertilizer from the chemicals. But either way, I think that's an unlimited chemical pond that we could just pump them out of, and that is where I want to head to next. I think that's the warehouse, but we're actually just going to chill here until daytime, and then we'll head over there in the daytime because I don't want to really adventure at night because I'm scared. The sun's finally coming back up, so let's just get going right now so we don't waste any daylight and head over to that structure we saw in the distance. Now, if it is the warehouse, I'm just going to steer and turn away from it. I don't really know what the warehouse is. I think it's a big bulky structure, and then after we check this structure out, I do want to go back up the road and see where the road ends if it does because we found now like a chemical pool which is cool. We've got the more of these little structures, another packing station for the second set of fruit. I think there's only eight different types of vegetables that the trader wanted I'm pretty sure. So that would make sense if there's two packing stations with four in each. And uh, what is this? This is a cool little oasis tile. This would be a nice little spot for a base too. You got a little water source there. Oh this is neat. Nice little desert kind of tile here. All right, hopefully no farm bots. Oh yeah, this looks this looks like something that we're not supposed to go check out. I don't think we can actually get there. We have to swim to get to the warehouse. There's literally no way to drive to the warehouse. Is it actually on an island? It's an island tile. Are you serious? No way. That I don't know if that's the warehouse or not. That looks like like the warehouse or something it's just it's huge yeah it's got tons of crates um is that another pack no that's not a packing station that's literally just a giant warehouse of course there's a walk getting chased by a farm bot let's just you know what let's put this down real quick on the lift again let's kill this farm bot hey bud thank you yeah you're dead okay well, let's take a look at this i think that's the warehouse I don't, I don't know what else that could be. You know what? We're going to just, we're going to put this up all the way on the lift. Let's just swim across real quick and check it out. Yeah, this is, this is massive. Holy cow. This is the biggest structure by far. This has got to be the warehouse. It's got to be the warehouse that devs are talking about. Look at all these crates here. This looks like a packing station. Oh, there's a tape bot. Okay. That's the warehouse. It's the warehouse. We're leaving. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, devs. I'll come back later. I'll come back another day. I'm sorry. May the 7th. 
We'll find out what's in this structure. I need to come back with spud guns for sure. There's no way we're fighting tape bots with a stupid hammer. Okay. Huh. Now we know. That's definitely the warehouse. That looks amazing. I can't wait to actually check it out. But I think we got to get the spud gun from the trader first. Grow a ton of potatoes. Get a base. Like, that's so late game. It's not even funny. I don't even want to try running in there with just a hammer. We're just going to get wrecked if we go in there with a hammer and no food. We need to be fully equipped. Definitely loaded with spud guns and spuds and all sorts of stuff. And uh, maybe we'll have a chance. So, we'll come back. At least we know where it is now. And let's head back to the road and see where the rest of the road brings us. I'm not going to lie. One of my favorite things with this new survival update. I love the water. The water is fantastic. But I love the roads. And I love the fact that there's roads just being generated. I mean, look at this. This, this car just doesn't even care. More structures. You know, we can loot these later. Whoa. Holy cow, the road is completely wrecked here. That's awesome. And they have a jump. First of all, there's a giant guy chasing a cow. I'm not sorry, cow, you're dead. But they have like a jump here and everything. That's cool. And a giant log. And we were just going to go around. Oh, goodness, there's farm bots chasing us. Oh, ooh, there's an intersection. Ooh, okay, let's check out. Let's go left first and then we'll go right afterwards. Just going to try and explore as much of the map as we can. Really just stick to the roads. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of stuff in between the roads that we're not really going to see but i just want to stick to the roads and kind of see where they end and how this map is sort of laid out and at least now we'll be able to you know drive from location to location i think we might need a trailer for this and have different trailers to lug more stuff around i like i said though i do kind of want to take this piston powered vehicle and turn it into a mining vehicle so it just has you know a drill on the front with a robot arm that allows us to mine as much stuff as possible and it'll still use fuel for the drilling but not really for anything else um we've got more of these structures here nothing really too fancy about these ones these are just more of those basic structures they'll spawn some random stuff you know, again, we can come check these out later. Not really a big deal. They're all pretty much the same. I mean, there's a bunch of different structures, but they've all got pretty much the same style of loot. Okay, back at another charred zone. That's kind of useful. Another place where we can get more of that ash trees. This one's actually like right off the road compared to the last one over by the trader. Either way, it's still good to know because making the base out of hardened metal, we're going to need a lot of that charcoal stuff. So we're just going to have to hack down a lot of those trees. Another one of the wheat fields, the massive wheat field tiles. There was one of those before over by our other base. This is crazy how big this map is. It's insane. And I love also too how all the tiles transition kind of smoothly from one to the other. There aren't any ridiculous sort of abrupt changes in tile. And then of course more of those structures. One over there in the wheat field. Another one of those structures up here. Nothing really crazy like the warehouse. The warehouse I think might be one of a kind on the map. Like it's just a here's the big warehouse don't come here until you're ready to actually like fight the end game you know what i mean like beating the warehouse might be the end game but i'm not exactly sure to be honest the devs haven't really talked about an end game at all and i i just lied never mind there's another warehouse right up there oh my good is that a second warehouse so unless we've looped all the way back there is another warehouse i don't think we've looped back look at this look at this look at this hill climber let's go buddy oh yeah what a hill climber Okay, I don't think we looped all the way back. First of all, there's another little road that just turns around and goes through a little sort of crescent area. That's fantastic. It doesn't go anywhere else. We're going to need a map. This road turns and heads down this way. Yeah, that's another warehouse. That's insane. Or it's the same warehouse from the complete opposite side, but I don't think we looped around that far. Okay. Wow. Wow. This is intense how crazy this map is. We're actually going to head back because our food and water are getting relatively low. And I don't think I have anything else to eat. No, I do not. But luckily, driving on this car doesn't take that much energy. The rate of decline is really, really slow. But either way, another warehouse way over on this side of the map, which is crazy. And then the road continues a little bit further in that direction. And heading back this way, we should see another warehouse. So... Definitely two warehouses. The one thing I would like to see in Scrap Mechanic Survival, which I don't think they have yet, is I'd like to see a compass. It would be really nice if you could craft a compass and then just like, you know, have it point you in direction. Because just navigating with north, south, east, west, I mean, I guess you could look at the sun, but 
it still would be a lot more convenient to have some sort of a, a compass and then even you know they could expand on that and go with a gps thing because they do use coordinates in scrap mechanic i'm pretty sure so they could actually expand and let you have a GPS thing, kind of like the mod pack GPS. Although I'm sure once modders get a hold of scrap mechanic survival, um, all this stuff is going to come out in mods eventually. We'll have compasses and GPS coordinates and targeting and yada, yada, yada. So, all right, it's getting dark out again, but we should be able to make it back. No problem. Just following the roads, especially with this light and back, you know, it's crazy. We're sticking to the roads and there's still so much to explore. Not even on the roads. Like look over there to the left. There's a forest that just you know untouched no roads nothing near it like what's in the forest we could go check all that out too so it's going to be really really interesting once we get to the point of having enough thrusters to make a stable flyer and actually fly around the map and see what's up with everything because i feel like that's going to be the point where you'll really get an idea of how big the map is now that we know where the trader is and we know that we need fruit crates i think the next important step is getting a robot arm built on the front of this car so we can get some more mining done and then actually building a base so we can start farming and packing up those fruit crates to trade to the trader for better items like spud guns and things like that. I think it's going to be very important to have spud guns when we go invade the warehouse and I want to get into the warehouse as soon as possible but in order to do that we are going to need some of that better weaponry. So establishing a base I think is the next priority for sure. We know where there's a ton of charcoal zones now so there's going to be really really easy to get that charcoal to build the heavy metal stuff and if we put a robot arm on this we should be able to turn this into a pretty awesome mining vehicle and just do a ton of mining get a ton of resources and build up a ton of that tier three metal that will then let us you know build a super reinforced durable base that the farm bots just can't wreck so i'm hoping that's where we can get going with the next episode but either way we're just going to head back to base now so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below i'm actually really surprised we haven't found any of those caged up farmers yet that trader joe wants we've only found these packing stations but at least we've got both packing stations which I think there's only two of them. Maybe there's a third if there's 12 materials, but I think it's only two and eight materials total. So either way, really, really excited to have found that. And of course, really excited to explore more of the map. But we definitely need a base and we should probably build an exploration vehicle that uses a gas engine just so it can go a little bit faster than this. But either way, let me know what you guys think. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time. Thank goodness for these roads. Otherwise, I'd be super lost.